Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this service on this grey but calm morning. Makes a change. So um, before we begin service, we have some bands of marriage to read out. So I publish the bands of marriage between David Peter Watson of this parish and Joanna Sandy, also of this parish. This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So we pray for David and Joe, and it's wonderful that they can be here with us this morning as well. So we pray, Lord of love, we pray for David and Joe. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome from uh, me as well. It's lovely to see you this morning. We're a little bit thinner on the ground today, but I'm in many respects not surprised to see that. Um, I think having had lots of changes in well, the world in the last week or so, I think some people aren't quite sure yet how that's going to play out in practice. Um, but hopefully I can reassure you gathered in them anyone else who's watching later, that we will continue to make decisions that we feel are right um, for the, in the best interests of all of us as we begin to or we'll continue to walk through uh, the future that lies ahead. Um, linked in with that, thank you to all who have completed one of the surveys that we sent out so far. If you're not online, you probably haven't seen it yet, but they are in the post on the way to you. So you will also have a chance to complete one of those if you'd like to. Uh, it's just trying to get a, a snapshot of uh, how people are feeling about things at the moment as we begin to shape some of those decisions, um, certainly for the next month or so that, that are ahead. So if you've not done them yet, uh, the online ones, that is, then please, uh, if you could, that would be really helpful. We've had lots back so far, and that's great news. Uh, just to say as well, uh, this week's been a really good week um, in the parishes, we've had the community hubs and cafes starting in both Barrow and Breen this week. And um, if you were at them, then you'll know that I, what I'm going to say, which is that they were really good. A huge success. And both, I think, really well attended. And there was just a really good feeling uh, amongst the people that came. And so I'm really excited to see how those continue to develop in the coming weeks and months and hopefully beyond that too. Uh, so just a reminder, in Barrow, Tuesday afternoons and Breen, Thursday afternoons, between one and three in the respective village halls. It's the easiest way of putting it. So just remember that. Uh, you're welcome at both. You don't have to live in one place to attend the other, or in fact, in Barrow and Breen to come to either of them. So they're open to anyone who'd like to come along. And then on Friday evening, we were desperately keen to try and re-establish some sort of link with the uh, the, the children that had been coming to the fun club on a Friday night and uh, so for the year sixes who are all about to head off to uh, well probably King Alfred's or another uh, alternative uh, we had a, a Friday evening reunion barbecue with them and ended up having 17 of them come uh, just year sixes that is which is very very exciting indeed and in September we're going to be launching a new group for them uh, for year, year seven to nine alongside the group for years four to six as well. So this is really exciting. Uh, if, the, if the children that came to the year four to six group all pitch up again as well, we could be working with somewhere around 40 of the children from the local school. Uh, and some of the year sixes were interested in having something of a faith perspective as well. So um, it does mean, however, that we need some help. <laughs> so um, it might terrify you, the thought of working with children. They're actually quite funny. Um, and often, uh, well, quite well, they're children, but they are funny. So if that is something that you might be interested in in helping with at all, then please come and see Joe or I. We can tell you a bit more about it. Um, then you can do all the safeguarding stuff, which we know and love so well. But um, 
it's a really great opportunity if you're interested. So that's the, just a couple of notices that I wanted to mention this morning. It's good to celebrate good things, and there have been some good things worth celebrating. And we come to today, and today is uh, the day that we are marking as Sea Sunday, and you have probably been given an opportunity to, to receive one of the little envelopes if you want to make a contribution towards the mission to seafarers, then you can do that and pop it in the uh, collection plate as you leave, and anything that's in those envelopes will go straight to them. Jeremy will be, in fact, is just about to come in through this door in a moment, and we'll be preaching a little later on. You can all wave at him as he comes through. That'll give him a surprise, because he'll wonder how you knew. But don't tell him I told you. Um, sea Sunday is a time where churches join together to remember seafarers and to pray for them, for their families, and for all those who support them. Good morning. When we think about our relationship with the sea, well, of course, we might think immediately of our beautiful beach. We might think of the amazing sunsets. We may think of the joy of that wind. But maybe we forget or don't realise that much of what we have and use relies on those who work on the sea. In fact, statistically, 95% of the food and goods that we use are transported by sea. And as we may know, conditions for seafarers are often not that great. So today, as we uh, think about this in, in more detail... I pray that we might use this opportunity to give thanks for all those who work on the seas and indeed other waterways in order to provide for our everyday needs, often at risk to themselves. And I think probably it would be remiss to think about the seas um, and forget about the refugees that are often putting their lives at peril um, as they are being transported or uh, across the seas as well. So I think it's worth just holding them in our minds and in our thoughts and prayers as well. So why don't we just take a moment of quiet as we hold some of those thoughts in our minds, as we give thanks for the good things that we've been sharing, and as we think about what we're going to be looking at today in our worship. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship together. And we continue in our worship as we listen to the words of Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him as we confess our sins to Almighty God. We pause for a moment of quiet to bring to mind those things that we need to confess this morning. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand together to say the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Creator God, you have made the sea beautiful and fearful. Be with all who sail on it for work or pleasure, and give them safe passage with Christ the Voyager who calmed the storm and strengthened his disciples' faith. Amen. We now sit for our first reading. first reading is taken from Acts chapter 27. Um, Just to put the reading in context, Paul and other prisoners have been put on board a ship bound for Italy. After many delays and being overtaken by winter storms, the ship's been forced to take shelter in a small harbour off Crete. Against Paul's advice, the majority on board decide to wait for a lull in the weather, take their chances and travel on to a safer, more accommodating harbour on Crete where they intend to then see out the rest of the winter. Reading from verse 13. When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose. So they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete, close to the shore. But soon, a violent wind called the Northeaster rushed down from Crete. Since the ship was caught and could not be turned with its head to the wind, we gave way to it and were driven. By running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took measures to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run on the Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor and so were driven. We were being pounded by the storm so violently 
that on the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. And on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. In the morning, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars. And then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow stuck and remained immovable. But the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us around it. Our second hymn this morning is Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. 
But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put them on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hand of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to You've got two masks on. <laughs> like I hadn't got my hearing aids in. There really would have been problems. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning. I just sailed down from Breen. <laughs> the favourable wind. Are you feeling seasick after that passage from Max, written by Luke, companion to Paul, so obviously written by someone who had experienced the terrors of storm and shipwreck. But soon a violent wind called the North Easter rushed down from Crete, since the ship was caught and could not be turned with his head to the wind, we gave way to it and were driven. We are pounded by the storm so violently. On the next day, they began to throw the cargo overboard. And then we have a hymn about tempestuous seas. How about another Bible passage? Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke and a stormy wind arose which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and they fell back to the depths. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at wit's end. The psalmist had obviously experienced rough weather. That's from Psalm 107. And if you've been on a boat or a small ship in rough weather, you might recall that, being tossed from side to side, difficult to stand. Maybe it's good that this is before lunch, not after. We don't want you feeling too queasy this morning. It isn't just small vessels that get tossed about in a storm. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to, I'm going to dress for the part now. How about that? <laughs> I may have told the story before, but still. Many years ago, we were anchored off a tanker loading port in Mexico. It's the southern part of the Gulf of Campeche. I expect you all know where the Gulf of Campeche is, but for one or two who don't know, it's about 600 miles south of Houston in Texas. The wind was starting to get up from the north, and the weather forecast wasn't too promising. With a change of wind, we were now on the lee shore. And I started, I'll get off soft, started to get concerned, time to move. And the lee shore is where the wind is blowing towards the shore, like a gale blowing up the Bristol Channel onto Barrow Beach. It might be good 
bracing dog walking weather, maybe, maybe Bev's enjoying it. But not when you're anchored off the gore boy waiting to come up to Dumble. Apocryphally, let's dump that. Apocryphally, an examiner in our orals exam asked a candidate what are the ten rules of what to do when you find yourself on the lee shore. So the candidate came up with various ideas as a more like chain, engines ready, etc., etc. No son, says the examiner. Rule one, don't be there in the first place. Rule two, don't be there in the first place. Rule three, etc., etc., etc. It's rather like the sin we always get kept drawn to, struggling not to commit, or maybe it's the one we just do too often. How to avoid it? Rule one, don't get into that place of temptation in the first place. Rule two, don't go there. Rule three, four, five, six, seven. You've got the answer, haven't you? Just don't get there in the first place. Sorry, I had to digress. Where was I? Well, the wind was getting up for the north, and we were on a lee shore now, and it was time to move. So we weighed anchor, and we steamed to the northeast, clear of the port, but then we found we were setting down on the land somewhere else, so we, we were rolling a bit, and I decided to change course to the northwest and get right away from it. And I knew we would roll heavily as we turned. So I phoned the bar. It was late in the evening, 10, 11 o'clock, something like that. I phoned the bar to warn them down there who were celebrating. And I didn't mention it. It was Christmas Eve. There was lots of celebration going on. So we turned to port, we rolled, we rolled heavily, we heaved and we tossed about. This was a 62,000 ton tanker, nothing small, but we rolled. They mounted up to the heavens and they fell back to the depths. And down in the bar, they reeled and staggered like drunkards and were their wits end. <laughs> Maybe the beer helped. When settled on the new course, I went down to the bar. It was a bit of a shambles. Chairs all over one side, drinks poured on the floor. Well, I warned you, I said. It's all a bit funny, really. Or so I thought. But that's life at sea. We were in no danger. The ships are lost at sea, seamen are drowned, missing otherwise died. It's quite a lot lost every each year. Most we don't hear about. So I looked the figures up for this year, and I was quite shocked. In the first six months of this year, it's recorded that 74 vessels have been lost somewhere in the world. Now, mostly small ships and fishing boats, but included river ferries with large losses of life. In total, about 750 persons lost, plus another 300 asylum seekers in small boats, and we mustn't forget them. Jonathan mentioned them as I came in. There's well over a 1,000 persons, men, women, and children, lost at sea or in rivers. It's quite distressing, isn't it? Well, quite isn't the right word. Small ships maybe, far away maybe, but all those lost with families are known to God. Eternal Father, strong to save. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. There was one really large ship, which you probably heard of this year, the Express Pearl, which caught fire off Colombo, was lost. Fortunately, the crew were rescued safely. 
the large ships do go down and seafarers are lost. Back in April 1970, which I expect is before most of you were born, <laughs> well, some of you. Anyway, I was serving on a bulk carrier with a cargo of steel. We were a couple of days out from Long Beach, that's the port from Los Angeles, bound for Antwerp. Jane, my wife, was with me, and all was well in the world. It was nice. The weather was good. My wife was with me. Nice ship. And then we picked up on the radio that the British ship had sunk off Genoa. Then the word went round. It's the valour. The news hardened and shocked. The London valour. Our sister ship. Identical to us. People lost, drowned. Eventually we heard that 20 of the 58 people on board were lost. Officers, crew, and the two wives who were aboard. We all knew some of them, people we'd sailed with. And suddenly it strikes home, becomes real. She had been on the lee shore in a storm and hadn't got away. The 38 survivors were cared for in a local hospital in the community. The master was blamed. He didn't survive to defend himself, but fortunately, because he saw his wife killed. We think there was more to that story that came out in the inquiry. But... And incidentally, on 9th of April last year, the port of Genoa, the local authorities commemorated the 50th anniversary of the London Valor and, and the 20 people. And reading that story again, it all came back to me. We get these memories, don't we? Things which happened in life, things which happened to people you know. But we're safe. People we knew weren't. Of course, things like that are the exception. Particularly with large ships, not many go down these days. And mostly serving at sea is a safe, a good occupation. But accidents do happen. Quite a lot of industrial accidents happen on ships and fishing vessels. And ships are lost. And the various seafaring missions can and do help in many ways including visiting seafarers in hospital, arranging contacts with families to know what is happening. In some cases, and particularly this happens in India, a local mission chaplain will go to the local seafaring communities and let them know what's going on with their loved ones back on ships. I recently watched a video of a few years ago put out by the missions to seafarers about a collision in the southern North Sea. Two cargo ships, the Corvus II and the Baltic Ace, collided, and the Baltic Ace, a Roro ship, turned over and sank. They can turn over very easily. Remember the Herald of Free Enterprise? Eleven men were lost. Thirteen survivors were brought ashore in Rotterdam and cared for by the mission to seafarers, given clothes and food and comfort, and families contacted. The ships and crews were well known to the mission centre in South Shields, and the Padre was visibly distressed at losing friends. And friends, that's... Um, that word came up by the mission Padre. That's what Padres and chaplains and volunteers in the missions are. A friend. I remember them well. A friend for seafarers to talk to, a friend to help, a 
a friend to provide for the little things that people from the ships might need access to, like a phone, a lift to the shops, even some toothpaste. And a friend when your ship has sunk, a shipmate lost. And maybe such things like helping men and they are nearly all men who have been abandoned by ship owners. The ship owner goes broke and he abandons his ship and all the crew. Some of you may remember there was a, I think it was a Romanian ship in Avermouth quite a few years ago now. She was just abandoned. And the mission to seafarers supplied them with food and all the other things they needed. Recently, this year, five seafarers were repatriated from the motor tanker Iber in the United Arab Emirates after being stuck, trapped aboard for nearly four years, unable even to get ashore. The mission in Dubai found out about this and managed with great difficulty to support the men and eventually to arrange visas and get them home. Can you imagine being trapped on a ship for four years, desperately needing help, and it gets mighty hot in the Gulf this time of year? And then a friend, the local mission chaplain, turns up and eventually sort things out. Thinking back to our gospel, the good Samaritan. Now that's what he was, a friend. A friend to the man in distress, a man beaten and robbed on the road to Jericho. And our first reading, the shipwreck off Malta. I, I want to read again, Rick. Ed Breen, Sheila, she read this passage and she missed a bit out. So he read this bit. After we had reached safety, we had learned the island was called Malta. The lady showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain, it was cold, and they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us around it. So she'd read that, and she found out she'd missed a bit out. So she went back, read the bit she'd missed, and then read that again. And it's just come home to me, this, two verses, it's what it's all about, isn't it? Showing kindness and being there for people. Friends, the strangers in distress, the nations of Malta to Paul, the good Samaritan, the good Samaritan to the man robbed, the staff and volunteers to seamen's missions and clubs to seafarers in distress, or just wanting a friendly face. It's got one more bit which I didn't have time to say at um, Breen. The COVID thing, it always comes up, doesn't it? At one time, at a single time, they reckon there were a quarter of a million seafarers caught up in the problems of COVID. A quarter of a million at one time, and there are still very many. Many couldn't get home at the end of their contracts because the authorities wouldn't let them off the ships, or airlines weren't flying. They have to remain on board for weeks, maybe months longer. And it's no fun when you've just finished your 11th month contract and want to get home to your wife and family, and you can't. We used to call it Shanghai in my day, but it wasn't for COVID. The mission has provided support when they can, and recently managed to arrange 100 Indian seafarers stuck in UK to get home. What are they doing stuck in this country? What stupid intransigence and bureaucracy. They're just seafarers trying to do their work carrying cargoes 
where we live and eat, just wanted to get home for months away. They're not holiday makers. So I feel quite strongly about this. Why the hell have our authorities got them home before? Sorry. <laughs> On the other side of the coin, you see fairs unable to join ships. And of course, if they can't join, they're not working. They're not being paid. Sometimes I get worked up on things. You should have been given a gift envelope or donation form with permission to see Ferris, if you wish. I really hope you will. Please use one method to support the seafarers when they get into trouble. When they just need a friendly face. Um, you can do it this week. You can bring it next week. Or you can do it online. It tells you how to. And of course... We'll be taking shoe boxes up to the Seamen's Club in early December in Portbury. Not too early to start filling them. One or more. <laughs> we'll remind you again nearer the time. By the time I finish, isn't it? By the time I finish. <laughs> it's giving me a nod. <laughs> I shall sail away. Oh, many at sea is a good life, a busy life, very enjoyable, and I loved it. I had 30 years of it, another 20 ashore. But for some, there are troubles and problems, and a friend, whether a good Samaritan, a welcome on a Maltese beach, or some of the local seamen's club. We do thank them. And to paraphrase what Jesus said, who was a neighbour to the seafarer in distress or just needing a friend and Jesus commands go and do likewise is he speaking to us maybe go and do likewise amen stand as we declare our faith together do you believe and trust in God the Father we believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth do you believe and trust in his son Jesus Christ we believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now sit for our prayers. I've just floated down from the back. Let's pray. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ Jesus, we pray to our Father in heaven. Father God, today we spend a little time in thought and prayer for the men and women who work for weeks and months sailing across and around the oceans of this world in order to transport the food and other commodities that we need and use on a daily basis. And for the men and women of the Royal Navy who sail every day to defend this nation of ours. For many, it is a harsh and lonely life 
with many dangers from the sea, the weather, and from those who would attempt to disrupt through piracy, having no thought for the lives of the sailors, except what they can gain out of holding both ship and sailors hostage. We pray that through your Son and the Holy Spirit, you will hold each and every one in your loving arms, love and protect them, and keep them safe for the loved ones who are waiting for them. Father, as we know, not everything goes according to plan. So we thank you for the Padres and volunteers, for the work of the Seaman's Mission in ports around the world, who so often step in to help and support sailors in difficulty, with either spiritual comfort or some form of physical help, whatever they might be. Father, we thank you for their presence. Please fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them wisdom and strength to carry out your work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our two church families here in Bellow and Breen. We give you thanks and praise that even in the teeth of this pandemic, we have been able to meet, to praise and worship you, and through the support of the Holy Spirit, keep Jesus front and centre of how we go about our daily lives, knowing that he loves us and will guide us and be there for us during these anxious times and always. We are blessed with an amazing ministry team led by Jonathan, who have worked so hard to keep us as safe as possible while we meet. We thank you for your constant love and support for them. At the same time, we think of those Christians around the world who are persecuted for their faith in your Son, Jesus, our Saviour, and ask you to protect them from the dangers they face in order that they can continue to act as your disciples here on earth and live their lives as you would wish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we continue to thank you for giving the scientists the knowledge to create the vaccines that are protecting millions of us against the coronavirus. We pray that the vaccination program will continue at pace, protecting more and more younger people from the possibility of hospitalisation and reduce the effects on the NHS. We thank you for the courage of the doctors and nurses who once again are stepping up to support those that have unfortunately caught this terrible disease. And our thoughts and prayers go out to those who are grieving for loved ones who have lost their lives to the virus. Father, through your Son and the Holy Spirit, hold them in your arms, support them and comfort them in their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our world, which at this time seems so unsettled. We pray for the people around West Germany and the borders of Belgium and Holland who have been subjected to devastating floods, with many people lost, homes, roads and bridges washed away. Times like this are becoming more frequent as our climate changes. Father, 
help those in places of power to recognize what is happening and for them to push more urgently for change in the way we look after the world you gave us. We pray for an end to all conflict in the world and ask for the peacemakers to have more power and success in bringing to an end this endless waste of life. Perhaps today we can think of the people of Myanmar who have been subjected to a military coup and where many people are fighting for a return to a more democratic government and for the army to provide more vaccine to help fight the coronavirus that is devastating the population. Father, we pray that you, through your Son and the Holy Spirit, will step in in some way to bring this conflict to a peaceful end. Knowing always that it will be your will and in your time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our communities here in Barrow and Breen, thanking you for supporting the work of the teachers and support staff in Barrow and King Alfred School. Thankfully, they are all on holiday now, and we pray that they, together with parents and teachers, can now relax after what has probably been a very trying and taxing year. We thank you, Father, for bringing them through it all and that they will approach the new term with renewed spirit. What joy, Father, that you, through your Son and the Holy Spirit, gave us the partnership for Missional Church, the program. And from that, after much thought and prayer, we now have a good neighbours community hub and cafe operating in both villages. Thank you, Father, for bringing people to both venues. So we continue to pray that we are doing your will and that both hubs and cafes will grow to become a permanent part of supportive life in Barrow and Breen. We ask you to bless each one of the organisers and supporters, giving them confidence that they are carrying out your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you that we live in this most wonderful part of your world. But Father, we remember and pray for those less fortunate than ourselves. We think particularly of those in sadness, due to bereavement and pray that through your Son and the Holy Spirit you will give them comfort and strength. We pray for everyone who, due to uncertainty and fear, are living in a state of fear and anxiety. Give them strength and hope that your light will overcome their darkness. Let's just take a moment to think and pray for anyone among our family and friends who we feel need the loving support of our Father through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Father, we take this opportunity to pray for ourselves, 
by asking you to fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to follow Jesus and to live our lives as he would want us to, in repentance, forgiveness, faith, and love for one another. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so from where you are, please do um, share the peace with one another. And then we'll move straight to the Eucharistic prayer. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring, we shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body 
because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. So let us pray together. Steer the ship of my life, good Lord, to the quiet harbour where I can be safe from the storms of sin and conflict. Show me the course I should take. Renew me in the gift of discernment so that I can always see the right direction in which I should go. And give me the strength and courage to choose the right course even when the sea is rough and the waves are high, knowing that through enduring hardship and danger, we shall find comfort and peace. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
may God, who in Christ gives, gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen.